Well, I want to welcome everybody to the February 14th, 2019 regular meeting of the Guyman City Council. And before we get started tonight, we're, we're honored to have the 2019 Leadership Guyman class with us. So if you would, if you all don't mind, would you go ahead and stand up so everybody can recognize you before we really get going? All right. <laughs> Okay, at this time I'd like to ask Chief Babb to come up and give our invocation for us. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for allowing us to assemble and come together, Lord, to benefit our city. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon these men and women that are here tonight that that have chosen to become uh, leaders in our community, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you uh, bless these men that are up here to make decisions for our community, Lord. Just guide them and direct them. And Lord, we just thank you for your many blessings. And these things I pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. If I could, I'd like the leadership guidance class to lead the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call this meeting to order. Agenda item number two is the attendance roll call. Peterson? Here. Swager? Here. Alvedras? Here. Crone? Here. Living Good? Hoffman? Mr. Wagner? Here. Mr. Petty? Here. Mr. Livingood had an emergency at work, so he couldn't be with us tonight. Agenda item number three is public comments and announcements. Public comments. And if I might remind you, if you haven't signed the, the roll over there, if you would, that way uh, Lavona can get everybody on the list in okay. minutes. Mr. Peterson, yes. I got just a quick uh, thing. It's, it's come to my attention that uh, I was asked today if uh, city employees could uh, get some time off to give blood and it's my understanding that Guyman partners with the uh, Coffee Memorial Blood Center and some of the people that have helped in the past are Barbara Campbell, uh, Shirley Cannon, June Jackson, uh, June Wade Wadley, Wanda Lane, William King, Taylor Kaufman, and Connie Taylor and I think we just need to tell them thanks for putting together and working on the, the blood drive. But I was asked if you know, and I thought I'd just bring that uh, when, when, to when see. When, I think it's in March again. Oh, so thank you. You bet. Any other public comments and announcements? Agenda item number four is approval of the consent agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Cron? Yeah. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number five is a proclamation to declare the week of February 11th through 15th as the Business Professionals of America Week. Do we have any folks from the Business and Professionals of America here? If why don't you all come up here and, and uh, stand behind the podium and I'll read this and then I will uh, give it to you. We'll get you to introduce yourself after that. Well, I've got I've got a list. Uh, Jesus M Mesta, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, raise your hand. Let, turn around. And let everybody see who you are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Daniel Ortego. <laughs> turn around, Daniel. Let him see your shining face. There you go. <laughs> Fa Ku, is that right? Okay. Yes, is that did, did I pronounce pa. it? Pa. Okay. Pa. Okay. And you're the secretary. All yes, right. Sir. And Patrick Vasquez, he's not here. Valera Aguilar, and you're the parliamentarian. Yes. And Ger Claire, she's not here, and she's a historian and reporter. And their sponsor, Summer Bainey. We're glad to have you all here. We're tickled to have you here. Okay, the proclamation, whereas the school is concerned with the business, education, 
in training of students for productive, satisfying careers. And whereas Business Professionals of America is recognized by the United States Department of Education as a national career and technical student organization and an integral part of career and technical education. And whereas Business Professionals of America has members in 23 states preparing for careers as tomorrow's business professionals, and whereas Business Professionals of America is helping to develop leadership abilities, competency in business, information technology, and office occupations, and interest in the American business system. Therefore, I, Kim Peterson, Mayor of the City of Guyman and the City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of February 11th through 15th 2019 to be the Business Professionals of America Week in the city of Guyman, state of Oklahoma. Agenda item six, we might want to move it to the last. <laughs> Was that right, Corey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Agenda item number six, a proclamation declaring the week of February 17th to 23rd as the Farm Bureau Week. And I know we have some representatives from Farm Bureau here. If you all would, why don't you go ahead and come up to the front and we'll read this thing and Then we'll get you out of here so you can go back to the livestock show and buy something. <laughs> evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Whereas Texas County Farm Bureau, as a nonprofit and general farm organization operating within the boundaries of Texas County of the state of Oklahoma, has served the farmers and ranchers of this great county since 1942. And whereas the Texas County Farm Bureau, through its concern for both producers and consumers, helps to develop a basic understanding of the complex structure that puts food on the tables of all Americans and most of the world. And whereas the Texas County Farm Bureau has dedicated itself and its members to maintaining agriculture as an honorable and respected profession which has been the base for much of, of the economic pr prosperity in Texas County and the state of Oklahoma. And whereas more than 500 families in Texas County are members of the Texas County Farm Bureau. Now, there, now, now therefore, I, Kim Peterson, and the City Council of the City of Guyman do hereby proclaim the week of February 17th through 23rd, 2019 as Farm Bureau Week. Agenda item number seven is discussion and possible action on approval of ordinance number 833, an ordinance amending section 1-201 of the Guyman Code of Ordinances, establishing ward boundaries, providing for severability, and declaring an emergency. 
the ordinance is attached and the ward map is attached. I think this is to bring in property into the wards and make sure everybody's registered with the election. Is that correct? Is there any discussion? Motion? Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd just like to make a comment if we pass this. Uh, it came to my attention that um, we, you know, we, we uh, passed last meeting about uh, the ward map and what have you. And it could possibly have kept somebody out of uh, registering to, or filing to uh, be on the council. I would suggest that from here on out that we only change the ward map on not election years or make sure that nobody's going to be affected by it. Uh, based on that, I would uh, make a motion that we uh, accept this new ward map. Okay. But I can't get off on the screen. Have a motion. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? <coughs> Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. You've got four ayes. We declare a motion. I'll make a motion that we declare this an emergency. Second. Have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item 8, discussion and possible action on approval of ordinance number 844, an ordinance amending Article 4, Section 4.1 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Guyman to permit construction of a building on two or more lots having common ownership, providing for severability, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and declaring an emergency. The ordinance is attached, and this gives, if I'm correct, this gives you the ability to build on more than one lots if you want to buy two lots together and build a larger home. Correct. It's just updating with what we had currently within our ordinance. And it's the planning and zoning's approved. That's correct. Okay. okay. I make a motion that we approve ordinance number 844 and ordinance amending article 4, section 4.1 of the zoning ordinance of the city of Guymon. Permit. <laughs> Sorry. You want to finish? He seconded. To permit construction of a building item 8. I'll second it. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. I'll make a motion that we declare item 8 an emergency. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number nine is discussion and possible action on approval of the Chamber of Commerce annual funding in the amount of $500 as recommended by the Convention and Tourism Board. Council, I ask that you table this one until I can further look into this a little further. Okay. Uh, I, I've got some questions. If you don't mind, we can wait and okay. postpone that until the next meeting. Anybody have any? I'll make a motion that we table item nine. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to Crone? table. Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. <clears throat> Agenda number, item number 10 is discussion and possible action on approval. The Main Street Guy and annual funding in the amount of thirty thousand dollars is recommended by the Convention and Tourism Board. The minutes are attached. Any discussion? I would like to I would like to see is it possible that we can amend this and have somebody from uh, allow the city of Guyman a position on the board of Main Street Guyman? I would like to make that motion um, with that in the motion. Is there a, a problem or, or anything in your bylaws that no. states that we, we can or can't, and and you're, we, you'd be okay with that? Okay. Exactly. You'd like it, okay? <laughs> See, that's a motion. I'd make a motion that we uh, approve the recommendation of the. Uh, Commission Tourism Minutes uh, for Main Street Guyman to receive $30,000 with the amendment that uh, one of the City Council be appointed to the uh, Main Street Guyman Board. Or City of Guyman representative, not necessarily. Oh, oh you, you, or, okay, or City of Guyman Second. representative. Just to be clear on the motion, you want this paid throughout the year, not one lump sum, correct? I just want to be clear. Mon paid monthly. Okay. Yeah. Second. Have a motion and second. Swager? 
Aye. Cron? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number 11 is discussion on and possible action on approval of Oklahoma leadership number 32. Annual funding in the amount of $5,000 is recommended by the Convention and Tourism Board. Minutes are attached. Well, I think we all feel like it's a benefit to have leadership Oklahoma out here. So, if there's no other discussion, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the $5,000 amount for the that uh, Convention Tourism Board approved for Oklahoma leadership number 32 for their annual funding. Second. Have a motion and second. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number 12 is discussion and possible action on approval of West Safety Solutions Corporation quote through the HGAC <coughs> pricing contract for E911 equipment in the amount of $239,218.87. Mr. Carnegie. Yes, the uh, quote you have in front of you is from Entrada West or West Public Safety Services. The 911 system we currently have has reached end of life on equipment. Uh, we need to replace that equipment now. Based on the governance that is in place today, we have an interlocal agreement from 1993 that asks that if any major purchases, they go in front of our 911 board, they go in front of the city of, of Guymans Council, and they go in front of the county commissioners. Uh, a week ago, Tuesday, our 911 board approved this purchase through the HGAC contract, and then on Monday, the county commissioners approved it, and so now we've brought it for your approval. Mm -hmm. The uh, HGAC contract is, is similar to the state contract. Uh, I believe the county and the city has purchased off of it in years past. It's uh, recognized by the state of Oklahoma. We've had Mr. Petty approve it, I think, last year. Mike Warren also approved it. State, it's basically in lieu of going out for bid. It's set pricing that's in that contract. And so the amount for the Viper system, which is the main core to the 911 system, is the 239 218 uh, As time goes on, there'll be some other pieces of equipment that'll have to be added on, such as recorders and things of that nature. Our main goal is to get the purchase order issued so we can have the equipment being built. It takes three to six months normally to get that equipment built. It's specifically built for each entity. And uh, our goal is to consolidate our dispatch centers into one location and that this new equipment's gonna allow us to do that. So. Okay. okay, any questions? Um, I'd like to, Chief Babb, do you have anything to add to this? On the the um, the interagency, it's with the county, city, and yes, the not, is, is the OHP is, involved? No, not in not in this equipment purchase. Is that what you're yes. referring to? Um, just like short brief history, um, eighty eight, I believe. Uh, the city of Guymon actually had the first 911 system out here. Um, in 1993, Texas County came on came on board, and so we have an interlocal agreement uh, between the city of Guymon and Texas County, and there is a governing board over the 911. 911 funds are derived from. Uh, cell phones, fees from cell phones and landlines, and all of that funds filters its way back into the 911 fund, which is kept here in the city, and those funds are generated to be used for 911. Okay. So it's not, it's not general fund money, it's 911 generated money. Okay. Mr. Carnegie, as far as the technical aspects, of the quote, is there, did, um, who, who reviewed it as far on the technical side? This has been, what, a three-year process, pretty much. I, you start looking at replacing equipment, we've started looking a couple of years ago. Uh, we've looked at several different vendors. Uh, I can say that the vendor we have now was on site eight and a half years ago one time, and they've not been back. And so my goal has been to find somebody that knows where the panhandle is. Uh, this vendor 
has the Texas Panhandle, has a good chunk of Oklahoma City, and they've been out here, I would say, at least 10 times through this process. They've flown an engineer out here twice, and then they had one drive in a few weeks ago from Longmont. Uh, Panhandle Telephone is going to play a huge part of this because uh, everything, not whether it's wireless or landline, at some point goes through their offices. And so Panhandle Telephone uh, has provided uh, representatives at several meetings looking at the technical side. Uh, there's got to be some changes just because technology's changed in the years. Where we had conventional trunk lines before, now we're going to be looking at fiber connections. Uh, there's going to be hopefully some cost savings by going to fiber because you're not charged on distance and things of that nature. So we've had several meetings, uh, I would say probably six technical meetings is what okay. we've had. Uh, Travis, Travis has been involved in, in right. most of those with Pennell Telephone and he's had text at some of those as well. Okay. We're, we're actually looking at hosting the, the core servers instead of hosting them in one of our structures. We're looking at hosting them at the CO, the central office here, just because basically every phone call that comes in and out of the Oklahoma Panhandle already comes through that building right. and there's battery backup, there's generators. Uh, one thing uh, I said, uh, and I'd be happy to visit with anybody about this, one thing that we have specced into this system is that it's expandable. Uh, in Oklahoma, I serve on the state 911 board. There's five counties in Oklahoma that do not have 911 at all. Three of those counties are in our region, Beaver, Cimarron, and Harper. And, you know, funds is one of the, the problems. And so we're looking at, at putting in a system that allows for sharing of resources. In other words, instead of every county trying to recreate the wheel, they still may dispatch their own calls and things of that nature, but it's a benefit to us in that we might get some of our equipment paid for by the sharing, and it's a benefit to them because they will not be able to afford it if they had to do it on their own. Good to go, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion, questions? I make a motion that we approve West Safety Solutions Corp. quote through HGAC pricing contract for E911 equipment, amount of $239,218.87, item 12. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Swager. Aye. Alvedris. Aye. Crone. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number 13 is a discussion and possible action on approval of a budget amendment to number one to the E911 fund for an increase of $240,000. Budget amendment is uh, attached. I make a motion that we approve the budget amendment number one to the E911 fund for an increase of $240,000. Second. Second. Have a motion in two seconds. Albedris? Aye. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number 14 is discussion and possible action on approval of real estate <coughs> lease between agreement between the City of Guyman and the Oklahoma Department of Public Safety. Lease is attached. I believe this all been added to Mr. Petty and worked out. It's many different conversations we've had with state officials in the last couple of weeks of working out some sort of lease agreement, and that's what that is for you at this point. Do we have a? Is it a rolling lease that automatically renews year to year? No, no, it's cancelable on 30-day notice. Uh, it's an annual lease. Okay. Questions? I make a motion that we approve the real estate lease agreement between the City of Guyman and the Oklahoma Department of Public Safety. Second. I have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number 15 is possible executive section to discuss confidential communication with the city attorney concerning a potential claim and concerning possible action pursuant to 25 OS section 307B4. Do, do we want to include item I six? Do we yes. want to include 16? We'll also include item number 16, possible executive session, to discuss former employees' eligibility for disability of disability benefits pursuant to 25 Oklahoma statute two, 2011 section 307. B1, 4, and 7. I'll make a motion that we go into executive section for items 15 and 16. 
I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Cron? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. We'll make a motion to reconvene. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to reconvene. Alvedras? Aye. Cron? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Uh, agenda item 15, there was no action taken. And uh, agenda item 16. Be agenda item number 17, the discussion of possible action regarding former employees' eligibility for disaster disability benefits. I make a motion on item 17 uh, regarding former employees' eligibility for disability benefits um, to discontinue the disability benefits. I'll second that. Have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Cron? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Any new business? Not will stand adjourned as the Guyman City Council will reconvene as the Guyman Utilities Authority. Uh, we've done agenda item number two. Agenda item number three is discussed and possible action on approval of a quote from Environmental Improvements Incorporated in the amount of $9,000 for a road torque actuator. Uh, yes, sir. It's uh, for the wastewater treatment facility. Um, for our contract with the city, anything over $5,000 we're supposed to bring before the council to get approval. Uh, this is an item that um, it took me three months to find this one. Uh, it's very, the brand that's out there is obsolete as far as the parts are concerned. So um, they wanted uh, between ten to 12000 to come out and replace. Basically replace the same item but with newer parts. Um, they kind of have a monopoly uh, with EIM actuators. I found this, Rototorque, they're out of England. Um, the company with the invoice I provided, EL, uh, EL2 Improvements, or EI2 Improvements, sorry. Um, they deal with them quite a bit. Oklahoma City's been going to them. Um, they've had a lot of good luck. They're very durable. Uh, they've been underwater for sometimes a week at a time. When the water subsides, uh, they basically dry them out and they go right back to work and there's no issues with them like what we're having. Uh, with gears stripping out, things like that. Uh, the price before y'all is for the 9000 that's to replace it, uh, and the uh, actual actuator itself. The actuator, I think, is about 6000 just for itself. Um, it's a quite a bit of lead time as it does come from England. They build it according to our specs, which they have all that. So um, that's what this is for, to approval, to get this replaced. Uh, what it does is the uh, each basin has a effluent valve. Well, this actuator opens and closes those valves according to the stages that those basins are in. So what it's, what it's doing is it's, it doesn't open the valve, so that basin cannot be used as long as this valve is down, which uh, can affect uh, process control, um, just basically the process of the wastewater treatment facility altogether. Okay. Okay. Any, any questions? Motion? I make a motion that we approve uh, the quote for Environmental Improvements Incorporated in the amount of $9,000 for the root torque actuator. Second. A motion and second. Crone? Aye. Alpedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four ayes. Agenda item number four. Thank you. Thank you. Is discussion and possible action on approval of invoice number 37937 to Infomark in the amount of $47,515.81 for the cap overage for 2018. Mitchell? You can or I can. What it, this is the overages within the cap program. We, we went through a while back on the uh, four VFD blowers. Uh, majority of it was electricity. The, Hopefully, with the install of the new ones, we'll be right on track going forward next year, which y'all have already approved. Okay. 
I make a motion that we approve invoice number 37937 to Infor Informark in the amount of $47,515.81 to cap overage for 2018 item four. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. You've got four ayes. Agenda item number five is discussion and possible action on approval of invoice <clears throat> number 250350 to Seward County in the amount of $21,598.50. The invoice is attached. This is for solid waste. This is for yeah. trash receptacles. Trash. Yeah, we haven't seen these in a while because it was under that other contract but prior to that this was normal business so I'll make a motion that we approve invoice number 250350 to Seward County in the amount of $21,598.50. Second. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Cron? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got four eyes. Agenda item number six is discussion and possible action on awarding a bid for the steel Live floor sanitation trailer, staff report attached and bids and Miss Rice. Hello everyone. Good evening. I'm Karen with the city sanitation floor mm -hmm. director and I'm here to ask you for money and I hated that I waited had to wait till last to ask you for more money, but <laughs> this is for a steel refuge trailer, um, live floor. We sent out six uh, bid packets. We received three responses. This one that I'm asking you to uh, look at, this would be what I recommend, and it is eleven to $17,000. Less money, but I am uh, familiar with this trailer. This is what we've used for years, and it works well. Um, stands up well under everything and it is um, a little bit easier to get it worked on we we have a company in Amarillo that you know if we have problems then we could go to Amarillo to get it fixed the company we have uh, bought from in the past is no longer in business in Enid so we've had it this these people are in Arkansas they are probably um, the closest that we could find every place from Minnesota to back east so uh, they want 10,000 as a deposit before they you know will start building which takes uh, 30 to 32 weeks but we have not paid that in the past because we've been familiar with the company and it's been a lot closer this is the first time we've ordered from them and they're asking for ten thousand okay. dollar deposit. Ten percent. Ten percent. Ten percent. Is there um, anybody local that could provide this no. within a? Okay. We have the company in Amarillo does. They are the K and L. Also, they have handled the Stego trailers, but they are. Um, they have to go out too. They're kind of a middleman, so it's just one more person that you're dealing with uh, they did say that they could be they could have the um, trailer here a little sooner but that was no guarantee being the middleman I don't know that you know Karen what's the lifespan on one of these uh, we have one that's as old as 10 years old okay and it's a little bit older than 10 years old it's it's um, pretty fragile at this point because the trailer holds up we can patch all you want to and we can take care of it but when it comes to that live floor you can re even repair it and replace it in sections but it's very expensive okay thank you so your your recommend recommendation is K&L Holdings K&L Holdings yes I yeah. make a motion that we award the bid to K&L Holdings for the steel live floor and sanitation trailer item six can you add that the 10 percent within your motion 10 percent up front yeah it's within that to make the 32 just put it in your motion 10 percent up front okay. item six all second I have a motion and a second Cron. aye alvedras aye swager aye peterson aye you've got four eyes is there thank any you. new business thank you ma'am is there any new business 
No, where's the problem? Okay, agenda item number eight. Any reports from city manager and council members? Let's see. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. I don't have anything, Mayor. Okay. No? No? I've got a few of them. Um, and I think you've all seen it at this point, but uh, the rebranding that we've been working on for the last, I don't know, three or four months has come in. It's kind of a finished product. Um, and as you can see, if you go down Sunset, you'll see that the beginning part of it and that flagpole has been set on the island. Um, and I, I do, I want to say thank you to Allison for all of her help in designing. You know, it was pretty much a drive by and look, this is kind of what we wanted and she, she nailed it. So thanks to Allison at Panhandle Printing for that. We have some polos as well, uh, kind of where we want to go. Not get crazy with our inventory, but I think that some people would like to do it. And the highlight I would like to say is, on all of them, um, opposed to what we had prior, is it states the town. It states Gaiman, Oklahoma on it, so um, people will know where we're located in the event. I've seen some without it, but I do like those. I just wanted to update you, you know, it's kind of come to, we've, we've worked on it, we've had a lot of different ideas kicked around, and that's the fin finished product. Along with, I also gave you all the Pioneer Days, I know is a ways out, but um, the old Spikes and Spurs golf tournament has dropped off, and um, the city of Gaiman is going to pick it up on that Friday. Uh, we're changing it to the Pioneer's Day golf tournament. We're asking, uh, we'll be going to sponsorship. Um, if those sponsors will be hopefully to provide us with a lighted fountain um, and aeration on 18th Green uh, to move water and uh, something kind of pretty to also look at the flag at night, which we're still working on. But as you drive by, it's just a beautiful thing and you know, it, hopefully people get behind it and we have a good tournament and a great Pioneer Days week, so. Okay. What else? Oh, um, a few other things. Sorry, I did give y'all some other documentation. If you look at some of the reports, I wanted to show y'all your sales tax and your use tax, mainly your, your big one, and based off if projections hold true for the next year, uh, an increase of hopefully $300,000 within the sales tax, maybe more, that was just off my quick math. But your use tax um, for February compared to 2018 is up 216%, which is significant. So it's your numbers are looking good. I know we're just in the first quarter of 19, but it's a positive, and I'll take it. So Definitely. Also, your hotel motel, I gave you all an updated version of that, too, um, just based off because last year at this time, again, we were still at the old 3%. Now we're at the 8 so. You're kind of seeing for the next three months, your numbers come up to see what you could have, uh, or I guess what 2018 actuals would have been, but it's still the increase and it looks good. So other than that, that's all I got. That's it. Okay. All right. With that, we'll stand adjourned. Thanks everybody for coming. Wait, Pete, we, yes. we still have one. Uh, Y'all have it? No. All I've got on mine is adjournment. Did you have that's what I got is adjournment. There's not another uh, item on there. There's two. There's a uh, city council and utilities. Do you have that? Mm -hmm. No, I don't have it. I don't so think I don't uh, that one was posted. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. We ran out of numbers at nine. Okay. Well, I mean, well, you're. Well, no, I, <laughs> I have it on paper. I don't have it on the electronic form, so. Okay. I think that's it. All right, thanks everybody for coming.